looking at a series of artistic works which have had a great um, significance on the world today. They are all very different in appearance, mm -hmm. but... Alright, here we are at the sculpture of Michelangelo's David. <gasps> oh my god, what is that thing? Um, it's a part of the male human body. Are they allowed to show that on public television? Um, yes, it's part of a work of art. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, excuse me, please do not stare at the painting. That sculpture. Thank you. All right. Now, this is a sculpture of King David of Israel. Wow. Now, he is special in the Bible. So Michelangelo loving works of godliness show the dynamic tension between God and man. He has shown an idealized version of what man can be with the perfect male physique. He must work out. Well, actually, Michelangelo studied dead bodies to make sure that every part of the anatomy was correct. I wonder if Ken's clothes would fit him. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but this is a sculpture and you're not allowed to put clothing on it. <laughs> I could sit here and analyze the statue all day. I could just sit and think all day about this. Well, I could sit after somebody helps me bend my knees. I could sit and think about the statue all day long. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but um, we don't have time for that. Let's move on to the next painting. It's the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, come on, let's just stay here. No, that's all right. He is mentioned in the Bible. The holy book is not supposed to be ogled by plastic dolls. Welcome to the Barbie show. <laughs> I am your host, Barbie, and today we'll be analyzing some real art. <laughs> Let's take a look at our... <gasps> I'm overcome with beauty. I've never seen so much... I can't... <laughs> I can't take so much beauty. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Sorry about that! Next painting. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. The next one is not a painting, however. It is the bust of Nefertiti. Mona Lisa. Huh. It was painted by a well-known Italian named Leonardo da Vinci. <coughs> there are many other wonderful paintings at the Louvre here in Paris, but this always draws a crowd. It is one of the most well-known paintings in Western civilization. <sighs> Hold up. Why do people want to look at her? I mean, She's not pretty or anything. Me, on the other hand, well... <clears throat> As I was saying, this particular painting is popular because of her mysterious smile. But what is she smiling? But why is she smiling? And what is she smiling at? Hmm? Is it because she has just won a bet? Hmm? Or maybe it's because she has just played a joke on her girlfriend? <sighs> Let's take a closer look at this grin of hers. If you didn't notice, there is a lump on her right cheek. Has she been beaten, perhaps, by her husband, her father, her friend, or maybe the artist himself? Who cares? She was ugly. She deserved what she got. <clears throat> Excuse me, Miss Barbara Dole. It's Barbie. I'm sorry, Barbie doll. What do you think of this painting? Wow, 
well, this has to be the ugliest painting I've ever seen Excuse in my me, life. Excuse me, please don't touch the painting. Thank you. I think that the colors are boring, her wardrobe is a disaster. I mean, look at it. And what about that hair? I mean, she must be using the wrong kind of shampoo. She needs to use like Pantene or something to get that body and bounce that I have. Well, <laughs> hey, the, the hair was the stun in that era. Who cares? And the dress was also the style of that era. And I believe that this is a rich, rich way of showing the beautiful style of that era and showing the symbol of the times. Now, let us also take a look at the background. Notice the left and the right. Left. There. Right, 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 right. This is the left. Left, right. Oh, wait. the Mona Lisa back, you will notice that they are not the same. They do not at all fit together. Look, there are mountains here and here, but here this, this shows that there would be a space between those mountains, and here there is water, and here there is land. Where did the water go? And here is a road. What happened to that road? Well, these are all questions that we must ask when we are looking at this painting. And they're all questions we must ask some other time when we care, maybe? I really don't <sighs> like this painting. I mean, look at it. The land is disgusting. It looks polluted. I mean, look at the air. That is not the color of the sky. And this is the ugliest woman I've ever seen. Well, I'm sorry, Bobby, but we cannot all look as a good as you. Well, all right? Maybe not the ugliest. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you trying to imply something? Oh, no. Not at all, Sister Wendy. Well, <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. Anyways, let's just move back to the painting. Let's move on. This is boring. <clears throat> well, let me just finish up by saying that maybe Leonardo da Vinci used these, the, this strange color of the sky and the, the, the background that did not go together to show that maybe life is not all what it is seems, like the strange grin of the Mona Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Well, let us move on. Our next Finally. painting is Giovanni and his bride. Yeah. <clears throat> Here we are at Giovanni and his bride. This is one of my favorite paintings. Bobby, Miss Barbara, where are you? Sorry, I was late. I had to change. Uh, as I was saying, uh, I totally clash with this painting. Uh, I have to go change it. No, no, Bobby, please, please stay here. Thank you. As I was saying, this painting is very numerous, and the number of statues is amazing. You might say that it is very rich in signs of being rich. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, it wasn't funny. Uh, uh, well. Just about every element in this painting is rich. Is this lady, like, pregnant? That was a study symbol. I will explain that later. The bed in the corner makes it appear to have been posed while ra in a randomly chosen bed. Oh, but no, no, no. Wealthy people had these wonderful canopy beds, and the couple wanted to show it off. The fur cloak on the gentleman. And the actress waist in the woman show their expensive clothing. Looks kind of grubby to me. <laughs> well, that was the style. Now then, this 
is expensive clothing. I mean, this dress cost me $12.95 at Toys R Us. I mean, Ooh. <laughs> well, it was a show of wealth <laughs> that you could afford to be fed. That is why she looked pregnant. I can afford to be fed. Yes, well, some people choose not to throw up their food after they eat it. Um, as I was saying, Sister Wendy, are you implying something? <laughs> yes, I am implying something. Now, back to the painting. Um, <clears throat> if you would like, I could show you uh, a picture of an ancient goddess who embodied the ideal of being well fed and heavy. Um, well, there is no way that I'm going to look at pictures of fat ladies. I mean, there's enough of those in the world. Why do you need pictures of them? Oh, very well. Back to the status symbols. What? To the status symbols. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. The little dog and orgies on the windowsill. They were slobs. Uh, no. Those are symbols of luxury. Why are they but on the windowsill? Because that would show off the beautiful orange light of the oranges. Ooh. Uh, there is also an interesting thing that I would like to point out. <laughs> excuse me. It's, excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> the artist is in this painting. He wrote his name. John <laughs> <laughs> Look what I can do. Excuse me, Miss Bombardon, please sit down. Well, now, the artist which punched me. Excuse me, I am trying to show that the artist wrote his name. <laughs> If you cannot control yourself, control, I'll show you control. Woo! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, I think I have to do this over. I know. <laughs> Alright, ready? Okay. Look what I can do. Here we are. Woo! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well! Let's have a gymnastics exhibit by Miss Bartertoll. Woo! 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 Are you ready? Alright, okay. <clears throat> Here we are at Giovanni and his bride. This is one of my favorite <clears throat> paintings. Uh, <clears throat> this painting is very numerous in the number of status symbols. You might say, that it is rich in signs of being rich. Oh, oh we didn't have Miss Doll with us. Miss Doll? Uh, Miss, Miss Doll, excuse me. Sorry, I had to change. Oh, yes. Well, about this painting, though, just about every element in this painting is about. The bed in the corner makes it seem to have been posed in a random bedroom. But no, no, no. Wealthy people had these wonderful canopy beds and the couple wanted to show it off. The fur cloak on the gentleman and the ugly's waist on the woman shows their expensive clothing. Well, it doesn't look that expensive to me. Oh, well, it was back in those days. <clears throat> it was the style back then. I mean, look at her dress. It looks like a curtain. Oh, well, it was a show of wealth. And it also made her appear to be a little <clears throat> plump, which was a show, which was another status symbol that showed that she could be fed. I can be fed and I'm not fat. 
<laughs> yes, well, some people do not throw up their food after eating it. <laughs> Are you implying that I throw up my food? <laughs> yes, actually, I am. Now, back to the painting. <clears throat> if you would like, however, I could show picture of an ancient goddess who embodied the same ideal of being well fed. Well, I don't want to look at pictures of fat people all day if you don't mind. Well, <laughs> very well. Back to the status symbols. The little dog and oranges or the willow symbol are also status symbols. They are luxuries that many people cannot afford. People can afford oranges? Yes, it was very, very expensive to import these from places where they were, where they would grow. Oh, like in Florida. Yes, but people did not import them from Florida in those days. Hey, what's that? Uh, oh, that is one of the most fascinating parts of this entire painting. What is it? Well, this is a mirror. But above it, notice that there are words. The artist is in this painting. He signed I his name. I can't read them. They're too small. Well, I will tell you what it says. The artist signed his name, John Van Eyck. Eyck. Above a mirror. Above this mirror. And he painted himself in the mirror. This isn't very common because it is obvious that the pet artist was there painting. With or without the signature. Also, if you look at the positioning of the cover, it becomes apparent that the art stood where you are standing. As you look at it, you become the artist, and you are a part of his art. I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, well, I'm terribly sorry that they didn't grow up playing with pa plastic dolls to make themselves look more lively and suitable for you. Well, can't we see a more lively and suitable painting? I mean, come on, you've shown me all these boring paintings so far. Can't you just show me one I like? Well, we could go back to the David. Oh, uh, no, I don't believe. Why? The next painting is a beautiful abstract art by Claude Monet. <laughs> oh, where? Uh -oh. Anything has to be better. Anything has to be better than this. You know, if... Um, that lady was alive. I could have given her one of my exercise videos. One, two, one, two. Uh, Miss Barbara uh, Dole, yeah. please, uh, please calm uh, down. Uh, Miss Barbara Dole, please, please return to the painting. Thank you. Yes. I don't think that she would have exercised much. To be plum was a fashion for women, and they certainly were not supposed to be jumping up and down and doing <coughs> Spending all their heads and all sorts of stunts like that. Well, you can't afford to lose a couple pounds there, sister. <clears throat> yes, sorry. Well, the women in those days simply stayed still and ran house. Oh, I can do wonders for that complexion. Miss <sighs> Barbara Dole. Time out. Makeover. No, Miss Barbara Dole. Please, please, stop, stop. Hello everyone, I would like to introduce the new and improved Sister Wendy, but since she wouldn't take that stupid penguin outfit off, I had to work with what she gave me, but it's an improvement. Sister Wendy. <clears throat> Hello. Well, may I please take this pink thing off. Ah. No? All right, fine. Here we are at Claude Monet's Rue Saint-Denis. 
national holiday of June 30th, 1878. What the hell is that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I, I think it would have been wicked funny if we had done it like live action and we had bought one of those big plastic blonde wings. Yeah. Or so if we okay. did stop and go action so you couldn't see our hands. That like you can't on. usually like see the hands on Well let me let me try something, okay? I just want to see if this works. Hold her. Like that. Okay. Hold it up. Okay, hold it right there. take the great pleasure in introducing the new and improved Sister Wendy. Although she wouldn't take her stupid penguin outfit off. So I had to work with what she gave me. Sister, if you will. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> May I please take this off now? Um, no. <laughs> oh, fine. I will walk. National holiday of June 30th, 1878. What the hell is that? It looks like a bunch of little lines. Well, don't look so close. If you look from far away, you will begin to see a glorious scene in celebration. Um, I think your eyesight is going. I don't see a city. It. it reminds me of Clueless. You know, when a guy looks good from far away, but up close it's a mess. <laughs> Clueless? Uh, whatever. <laughs> Sister, come on. That is so two years ago. Oh, well, anyway, if you look at the crowd of people, their faces are not noticeable. That is because the individual is not important in the mob of people gathering. No, it's because the picture, picture, rather, is too far away to see their faces. That is what it appears to be. But Monet could have painted the scene from any angle. He chose not to paint the faces and instead to paint a street scene with rows of buildings on the side. Hey, I made a masturbation you might like. I, I believe you mean observation, dear. <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyways, I found that there's a lot of red, white, and blue colors. Yes, those are French flags. Oh, I thought someone messed up the American one. I was like, hey, where did all the stars go? <laughs> Well, obviously we are not getting anywhere with this painting. Obviously. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. Well, then he must be the perfect candidate for the job. Uh, what? Exactly. Let's move on to the next painting. I don't get it. It is another abstract painting. A work by Picasso, a famous artist. But I don't early get it. Shh, of the early 20th century. I don't get it! That's exactly the point. Alright, here we are at a painting by Keith Harry. He is a 20th century <coughs> artist. 20th century? Yes. Okay. Um, that is the century that we live in. a 20th century artist. Uh-huh. Now, notice the bright orange and red colors contrasting with the green and purple. It clashes. Uh-huh. Well, 
You see, artists do not have to follow the fashion of the age. They can clash if they so desire. Well, they shouldn't. I mean, people don't want to look at stuff that doesn't even match. Well, I'm sorry, but not all artists paint with different shades of pink. They like more contrast and variety. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't even think this qualifies as art. This has to be the ugliest rubbish I've ever seen. I mean, it looks like it was painted by a three-year-old. Excuse me, did, did, did you say that this is not art? Uh, yeah, I said this was an art. Well, I must beg to differ. I do believe that this is art. If you can prove it, I'll believe it. Alright, now, look at the form that is being used. Form is an important part of art. Now, look at the color of the composition, the contrasting colors. That is also very important in a work of art. Notice the actual form of the head, body, and arms of people raised in triumph or defeat or joy or ecstasy. This is a painting. It makes you think. It makes you feel and therefore it is art. Um, can I ask you one question? Um, sure. How much do they pay you to sit here for hours on end talking about nothing? Well, do you think that you could do a better job? I certainly do. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I may look stupid, but I'm smart. Well, I'd like to see that. Well? Yes? I think we can arrange that, can't we? All right, I quit. This is it. I'm sorry. All right, I've been walking around in this stupid penguin outfit for the longest time. I just cannot take it anymore. Oh, come on, babe. We're paying you good money. No, I'm sorry. All right, I liked my job in the other videos better. All right, you know, I'm sure even though they were made by Playboy, you know. <gasps> Even Look, I don't do Playboy. I'm sorry that they wouldn't take you. This is the last straw. I'm not working with this blonde bimbo any longer. I quit, all right, boy? Oh, come on, babe. You can't. You have to talk to your sister one day. Well, here we are. Why don't you put your feet right now? So we can sit right I know, but you gotta just put your feet behind you. Come on, side. Fine. Is it recording? Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. Here we are at the bust of Nefertiti. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, the bust. The bust. Okay. Go, go, go. Uh, okay. Here we are at the bust of Nefertiti. <gasps> the bust? Who would want to make a statue of someone's bust? I mean, that's a little perverted for a G-rated show, don't you think? Okay. Um, the bust is a statue of someone from the shoulders. All right? Yeah. Well, here we are at the bust of Nefertiti. And this is a wonderful sign, a wonderful symbol of the way that ancient Egyptians idealized the art. Now, this sculpture makes Queen Nefertiti appear much more than the average Egyptian. Now, if you look at this, notice the elongated Notice she has a fro. Oh, my God, that's ugly. That is not a fro. That is a hat. Well, it looks like a fro. But it is a hat. And the hat makes her makes her head look larger. That Almost hat makes her look like she has a fro. Yes. Well, the extended hat mm -hmm. makes her head look larger as almost if her brain is larger than most Egyptians. <laughs> now, the elongated neck is not humanly possible. And yet it is, so, it is a symbol of gracefulness and beauty. And that 
This one. Just an elongated neck. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, she is beautiful. She could almost be on the cover of Vogue magazine, for instance. Yes. And since this is about an idealistic work of art, maybe you would have some comments to make, Miss Doll. Well, I personally don't think that she can make the cover of Vogue because that makeup job is absolutely hideous. I mean, whoever did her makeup must have been out of it, you know? <laughs> it isn't makeup. My makeup, on the other hand. Excuse wow. me, excuse me. That is not makeup. That is paint because this is a work of art. Uh. Sculptures do not use makeup. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, well, I'm done with this. Let's go on to the next painting. <sighs> well, uh, we are not looking at another painting. The next is a sculpture, a full-body sculpture by Michelangelo. Masterpiece, David. Michelangelo, wasn't that one of the Ninja Turtles? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, that was good. All right. Here we are at Michelangelo's David. <gasps> oh my God. Where are his clothes? <gasps> Are they allowed to show that on public television? Ah! I, I, excuse me. <laughs> that is a work of art. Well, I mean, the entire sculpture is a work of art. <laughs> yes, um, it is. Mm -mm -mm. He's not wearing any clothes because Michelangelo wanted to show the dynamic tension in this. This is a picture of King David from Israel. And, excuse me, excuse me, please do not ogle the painting, I mean the sculpture, thank you. All right, now, this shows the dynamic tension between something godly, such as 